Good evening. Hello. So I saw in the chat that Eric is late, if he even shows up. And uh, I also heard, I saw in the chat from Andrea that he will also be late. So uh, perhaps he needs to take care of his children for some some activity, but he, he will probably show up in five, ten minutes. But uh, let's mm -hmm. see if he has joins before we start. Hi Andrea. Hello. You made it. I made it. Yeah. It's <laughs> good. So Eric is a bit late. Uh, we don't know if he's will join at all, but here is. Oh, here is. Hi Eric. Hello. You got out of the meeting. Yeah, the, the other parties said, oh, actually, we're running over time, so let's wrap up now. <laughs> and everything went that really nicely. So you didn't need to crash the meeting then. You. Yeah, good. Um, OK, I guess we can get started. We are quite a few already here now. I can share my screen with you. <clears throat> um, just as a bit of information to the rest of you. Um, I'm switching position or have switched position internally or Ericsson. Uh, so in the future, I might not be as active or I probably not, will not be as active uh, as I've been before. I won't disappear completely, but uh, uh, you will most likely see less of me. Uh, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So you're aware of it at least. Is the new okay. position still connected to CI in any way, or is it completely different? Yeah, it's connected to CI. Uh, so, uh, and I will still be, uh, I'll be part of the, the A full work, uh, ah, yes. but they wanted to, to put some additional effort inside Ericsson. Yeah. I know where you live, Matthias. I will come and haunt you. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I'll probably be uh, putting some comments in there if he, if he even thinks I should do that. So mm. I'm not completely out, but uh, less time. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate yeah. for us. Uh, mm. It is, really. Yeah. You have provided valuable inputs to the project so far. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, should we go into the two different topics that has been added to the agenda? I added one of them. I guess you, Andrea, added, added the other one, or, or was it maybe Marissa? I, I, I added it. Uh, so the first mm -hmm. one, yeah, is the discussion about the request that um, I, I don't mind okay. which order we go. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I was hoping to see Mauricio here, but uh, for that discussion, but we could, of course, discuss it without him anyway. Uh, otherwise, we can look into the other one. Uh, maybe we can Please. switch order of them and, and start with the the other issue, the one that you wrote, Andrea, or the pull requester. Sure, um, sounds good. And we might see Mauricio later in the meeting, hopefully. We'll see. So I can bring up that one. <clears throat> and I think it's very good that we start detailing new or new parts and uh, 
structuring the events, uh, the syntax. It's very good that we, we progress there, I think. So I very much look forward to this being merged eventually when we finish, when we feel we're ready with it. Uh, I had some comments on it though. Uh, I'm not sure how much you've seen those comments, Andrea, and if you might even have replied to them. Uh, no, I've not looked at this PR thing since I was back from um, my holidays. Sorry about that. Mm. Um, yeah. So let's see. <clears throat> Where I had I had some comments. Where was that now? Of course, it's not visible in this view. Um, and it's easier to see it here than it's there. Or maybe Andrea, do you have a special special uh, agenda you'd like to raise for this specific pull request, or should we just discuss anything? <laughs> What, what do you feel is more, more urgent? Um, no, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think it's uh, important to get the, the, the schema um, in, and that hopefully unlocks the work of the, um, of the SDKs. Uh, but um, yeah, so I'm definitely happy to, to discuss uh, what is the best uh, structure we want to, to have. I had some ideas in mind that I put into this PR, but I mean, mm. they're not necessarily the, the best. Or the, um, I was trying to uh, basically, yeah, I think we discussed a bit about this, uh, re reuse the, the the schema a bit for, for the objects where we're applicable, uh, but they're, I think last time we discussed that we could do also this the other way around. Um, compared to the way it is defined now. Uh, yeah. So one, one thing that that I maybe want us to discuss is the proposed structure here. Um, I think one comment was that we could also show a complete uh, event with the, the data field added because in the cloud events context there is the data field after this or whatever but in the in the object where our payload will actually be stored so if our payload is in json format which is actually what's stated in this example uh, then i believe we could have a show a complete uh, event so to say from cloud events perspective including the payload part so it's even more clear how the complete JSON structure will look. That makes it also possible to relate the, the cloud events fields with the CD events fields, which are to some extent overlapping. Uh, and of course they are, uh, they might need to be in both places duplicated uh, since we will parse the CD events part uh, and I guess our event schemas will only consider the CD events parts and not the actual cloud events parts. Those are already predefined what they will look like. So the schemas we will provide are for this part of the event only, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so the data property and also the schema, is it called the data schema or what is it called maybe? I think I commented on that as well. Uh, should probably no, I think it's data schema. Data, data schema. schema is the, I think data schema is the link to the schema. Yeah. And data is the actual data. Um, yeah. So those two could probably be added to this example cloud events uh, context here. Because we cannot live without them, at least not without the data payload. I don't remember now if data schema is maybe is mandatory or is it optional from cloud events perspective? I don't remember now. It's, it's optional, I believe. It's optional, okay. But I believe we have said that we actually want schemas. Uh, and by that, I think we should state that 
from our perspective, it should be mandatory to have it in the cloud events part. Uh, if we could, or could we split such requirements? Maybe we couldn't. We could maybe only require what is in the CD events payload. Um, mm. Yeah, I guess having the schema in there, that's, yeah, I, I, in fact, I had a question about that. So the, having the, the link to the schema there, I think it's, uh, it's handy, uh, especially at development time. Uh, if you want to, to build a client that receives that event, um, I suppose once the uh, the client is is defined, having a link to the to the schema in there um, is not strictly necessary, as long as you have the version defined, because the the scheme uh, and as long as in the spec we associate the the version with the, with a specific schema version, of course, uh, because the um, but yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah. if a client will use the the schema at one time to parse the the message. That's um, which uh, which I think it's a reason why it's optional in uh, mm -hmm. uh, in cloud events. Uh, but right, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, yeah. I, I agree. We should always have the content written according to the schema. Yeah, we, we can maybe at least recommend it to be part of the the cloud events uh, context, uh, but we might not need to require it then. I'm thinking of, I mean, for example, if there would be if there would be custom schemas uh, which would somehow restrict the content of the event further from what we have described in our CD events spec. That could be one use case for needing mm. to provide the schema here as well, because I mean, we could, for example, limit the value range of certain parameters in a specific use case of these events or whatever. Uh, and then it's valuable to be able to provide that uh, okay. narrowed or limited schema, I think. <clears throat> but maybe that's mm. an, an edge case uh, for now. We can at least probably think of it because it could be that the the user wants to have uh, a more detailed version, as you said, of it. And for example, they have ranges of values and so on. Mm. And then it might be good actually to be able to find that schema so you know uh, what it was and, and how to read it. Yeah. So, so from experience with Eiffel in Ericsson, for example, we have, there are some lot of fields which are free text strings. Uh, but we internally want to limit them to a certain range of enums uh, with certain predefined values so we can easily interpret them uh, from the Ericsson perspective. But then from a more general open source Cypher perspective, they do not need to be limited that way. Uh, so I think we, we need it. Uh, we need an iPhone, and therefore I think it would be needed here as well for some use cases. Anyway, that might not be most the most important part. But you, did you note know something about that, Andrea? Or... Uh, what was the last question? And then sorry. Yeah, did you note know anything about the schema that could be recommended to be used but might not be uh, required? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I will. I will update it. Uh, yeah. So then, when it comes to this specific structure, uh, we have uh, what, what is called the subject here, which is more or less a placeholder for the actual, so to say, interesting content for the the event, as I see it. Uh, and then the task run here is a duplicate of the uh, verb or the what is it now? Uh, help me. Yeah, yeah. The, na the name here. <laughs> subject. Yeah. And, and the name. Yeah, so the, the predicate, right? Uh, or what, what should we call this part? Uh, oh, Isn't whatever. that a subject? Yeah, but the subject, I mean, this, this is, uh, is this the noun and this is the verb then? We talked about those different terms, yeah. the parts of yeah. the subject, right? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's also a mound up here. Okay, it's called subject. Okay, yeah, right. So then <laughs> this part is a subject. There we have a subject, and then we have a subject here as well, and we have a subject out here. So we have a lot of subjects in this structure, <laughs> which we need to clean up, I guess, a bit. Uh, we cannot, of course, change this. It's a cloud events defined name, so we cannot change that. But whether we should call our thing here subject as well or something else, uh, we can maybe discuss. Uh, and then when it comes to the actual structure, I propose two alternative structures here, which we could discuss if I find it now. Yeah, here we have them. Uh, one could be this, that will more or less just flatten the whole structure. So we have the, the uh, generic part, which is valid for each event. Uh, and then on the same level, we just add the event specific parts. Uh, this might be confusing if, if you can't really see which fields are generic and which are not. Uh, and that might be an objection to that. Uh, another way would be to instead have a separate structure for the, the actual common parts, which could be called meta or something else, common or whatever. And then the actual event things. I mean, that would yes make it easier to uh, then, then, I mean, this could be a sub schema uh, for this generic part. And then the actual event is contained. Uh, the actual event parameters are contained on the top level instead. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but uh, we should just choose the one that is, we feel is, is best for our, both as producers and consumers of the events, I think. Um, <clears throat> Do you have any direct comments on that, Andrea, or would you prefer this program that you proposed? Um, well, the, the, the one I, I proposed resonates with my way of thinking because um, it kind of encapsulates um, different things. And if we had, I imagine we can have like, we will have extensions and maybe other linked events or other parts of the message that we might add in the future and then kind of the sub the, the, the specific the details of the subject um, remain isolated. Okay, I mean, so you mean then th those would be after this on the same level of subject. Is that what you mean then? Yes. Right? Okay. I mean the mm. the, the the subject in line the, the fifth <laughs> field in that example. Um, is a copy paste error. So the, the, definitely the first version of the subject in this, this is something that needs to be removed. That was just yeah, yeah, placed yeah. there by mistake for sure. Mm. Um, in terms of structure, um, yeah, I thought it, 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 looked, um, it looks nice um, and or easy to parse uh, for me. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, because then I, I know that all the fields under task run are specific to a task run. And I mean, we could have something like meta there, like you proposed. Um, and then you could infer the fact that these fields are specific to a task run from the type because it's a task mm -hmm. run type of message. So. Um, yeah, we, we might not actually need this level since it's already a task run event. This or do we need this as well then? Or could we flatten it one level, you think? Otherwise, I don't know. Um, what extra one, information one, does this give? Yeah. One question there is, <clears throat> uh, when you parse such an event, uh, do you want to have an event specific key uh, in the message, basically, do you want do you want to be able, need to look up okay what type of event is this, and then look for the uh, key, or do we want to have uh, generic keys in all events, uh, so you can uh, more easily parse out uh, the event? Do you understand what I'm talking about, and do you follow me? I think partly so. In in one aspect, it's 
it can be annoying to have keys whose name depend like it, it gets hard to write a schema for something like that uh, where you have different but on the other hand it's nice to to know that the id and task and pipeline run etc they they connect to a task run uh, I lost half my train of thought, though. Um, yeah, the other part, but if we make it generic, I guess there are certain subject information that would not be generic, that would only apply to specific types of subject subjects, like a task run. So a task run can definitely be part of a pipeline run, but maybe something like, a, I don't know, a, a deployment event, maybe, or a, a degradation. It's not part of a pipeline run because yeah, services degrade whenever they want to, not necessarily because they are in a pipeline. So yeah, I believe, yeah, I believe that we have said that some fields should probably be mandatory in any event type, such as ID. Isn't didn't you say somewhere, Andrea, that certain fields yeah. should always be part of the subject? Yeah, the the ID. Uh, definitely must always be part of the subject. Um, that's the, I think, the only one uh, that is mandatory for all subjects. And others, uh, others are really like, it's where we, we build the, uh, it's where we use the dictionary to say, okay, this is the official name for this property uh, that, you know, we want to be recognizable across uh, different platforms. So if you have an artifact, um, you will have the ID and then you will have the URL or a SHA or whatever we, names we pick, uh, but uh, those names will be uh, both specific to the subject and also should be uh, yeah, shared across platforms. Yeah, one way to deal with that, then, if, if the ID should always be in any subject, would be to lift up the actual ID field into the subject object itself and then have the event specific field in a separate object under it. Mm -hmm. So that we can always parse this subject there. Maybe. Then it might also be nice, but maybe we're going too far, connecting to what Matthias said before, to also have the type of subject on the top level or mm -hmm. next to ID. So then we, we can check that we can check that first. And if that is of type task run, then we know that there will be a task run key which we can look into. Again, it has to do with, with how simple it's to mm. it will be to, parse, to parse this stuff. Mm. Uh, but yeah. w if we have this, then we could also just do it so that we don't call the task run key task run. We just call it subject data or data, whatever we want to call it. Because then the schema <laughs> yeah. is is uh, perhaps clearer in that sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then it, this yeah. resembles a bit of the idea that I put in my comment. Uh, it's on cloud events binding. Uh, uh, I put a comment there on a uh, suggestion, which could do something like this. But the idea there was then, of course, as, as Eric said, it is easier to parse it. So it's it's always a known uh, key. Yeah, this is going to be a small anecdote, but something I ran into big problems with when it came to having uh, sort of uh, more dynamic keys in object was when I wanted to use GraphQL. It really doesn't like when you have uh, dynamic keys. It wants the schema to be exactly the same all over the place. Otherwise, it gets really hard to query. Uh, or I'm just stupid, which is also an option. But I think it was uh, GraphQL that <laughs> did tricky for me. OK. The question, I, I know, uh, Andrea, you said that, that the the subject shouldn't be. That's a, a typo. But what, what do you think it should be then? Should this not be there at all? or Because this um, is the same string as this one. Currently. So if, you, if you're putting together the kind of the header part and the... Uh, I think I mean, you're looking only at the body, right? No. Yeah, no. So yeah, the first subject mm -hmm. should not yeah. be there. Yeah, that's right. So this is the CD events body. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the first 
copy of subject as just copy pasted from the top and I forgot to delete it. Let me... uh -huh, okay, yeah. that shouldn't be there. I was thinking if this ID below there already existed somewhere on the top level, but it doesn't then. Should this be on the top level? And since it's mandatory in any event, shouldn't it then be on the top level instead? And what makes it different from this? I mean, this is a UUID, right? The event ID. That, that's the event ID. Um, um, so the subject ID is not unique for the event. It's something that you can uh, say, give me all the events related to the subject, for instance. If you're mm -hmm. collecting all the events and you know it, it gives you if you the ability to to easily search for or if you are listening for events um, and you get the initial event for a certain subject you might set up set up a filter that says give me the other filter for all the events from this other subject an alternative would be to do it this way then Yeah, um, I mean, there. And then we don't need the, the sub part there, maybe. Or we, yeah, we can still call it sub if maybe. Just as a, <clears throat> a reflection there, um, if you would type out in both examples how you would uh, uh, access subject, uh, in the first example, it would be uh, subject.id. Uh, in the second example, it would be subject underscore ID, mm. uh, or uh, yeah, event data subject ID, or you have event data subject underscore ID. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, actually, I, I'm when I when I see it like that, I'm wondering maybe it's it's a little bit easier to actually have the. Uh, yeah, that one, mm. because then you can basically say, okay, what keys do I have under data subject? Uh, yeah, yeah. Whereas the last one will, it will be a little harder time trying to figure it out. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, that, that part I like in, in the way it's structured that if you use like a JSON path, into a certain field, you basically see in the JSON path the what is it that you're addressing. Um, I mean, you, in, in, if you have the task run in there, then you see uh, subject task run ID, and it's clear what is. But um, I, yeah, I understand. That's the same. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I understand that also. You you might say you want you might want to say okay under data. Um, if you put it under data and the anonymous one, you don't see it in the JSON path, but then it's the same path. Um, I'm actually not sure what is easier for parsing. It's whether whether it's easier to have uh, data that might contain different things, or it's easier to have different keys, but the same key always contain the same kind of schema. It makes sense. I'm wondering, like, if you're if you would be querying something, uh, say you have a bunch of events and you're querying, if the search path would be the same for all type of events. Uh, in my mind, I'm thinking that would be easier. Uh, so, for example, you say, uh, uh, yeah, date uh, event data subject. Um, ID equals, and then you can get all the ones that have that one. But if you would have different ones for like task run, build, and so on, mm. it would be more difficult to do that. So uh, convenience for kind of like searching and 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 describing paths. I in my mind, it sounds easier to have it uh, that path fixed. Did you mean this one? This is easier, or? Yeah, where, where is uh, a known path down in all events? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess 
one drawback is that it's a bit harder maybe to read this event, this JSON blob manually. It's easier for, for a machine and that's maybe what you should focus on. But it's a bit harder to have these intermediate levels um, when you look at it manually, maybe. Or you just get used to it. <laughs> um, yeah, I would probably vote for of course, data is not readability. Good. Yeah, yeah, data is not a good thing since that's already in the cloud events part. So maybe something else here. Mm. I don't know what it should be called, but uh, <clears throat> content. Oops. Subject content or something. Yeah, content could be. Mm. We don't need to repeat it. Something like that. <clears throat> The alternative, well, uh, yeah, hmm. And then you're right, actually, there, Andrea, that this makes it a bit cleaner. Um, my uh, suggestion was then, if we take this first example, which we seem to vote for right now, was to include the, the top parts in the other structure. Let's just call it meta for now. Um, I'm not sure if that L helps in any way then. It doesn't really, since all these are standard parameters and the same in all events, then that level is just unnecessary additional information in this kind of... Even with that, I guess, if you introduce a meta top level thing and put, for instance, event ID in it, then it's no longer a cloud event. Yeah, uh, yes, it is. I mean, this is still inside the CD events data payload. Oh, sorry. I thought it was on the top yeah. level. Okay. No. So, so we are not on this top level here. We're just in, in the CD events context part. Right. Still. Right. Um, yeah. But it doesn't maybe make much sense then to have this level uh, with this in mind that we've discussed now. I tend to agree. One thing would be that you don't have any bare, uh, it's more, what you say, like symmetrical that you don't have any any data uh, directly on on, <clears throat> on like event data, but you always have, have it one step down if that is, uh, makes anything easier. Yeah. I think, Andrea, you mentioned that, for example, extensions could be on another one in parallel with subject, right? Uh, yes. Something yeah, that could I think... be added. Something like that, yeah. And that's a whole other story. But I think, I mean, for sure, um, the application will want to, different platforms will want to add data, embed data in here. Um, and if, yeah, so we, we might have a combination, I guess, of documented uh, extensions so that other can parse parse them or just free form. Um, but I guess that's, uh, yeah, that's another discussion. We haven't really mm -hmm. started yet. But just, but, yeah, but just for the sake of, of the, the discussion now, if, if we should make this extensible with with more parts, then we should only have the common core parts here. And then we have the event specific ones here, which are part of the actual protocol. And then we could have additional extensions here. Uh, and if if we would, for example, have links in these in here as well, we might have them as a separate part. I'm not sure if that should be on this level. Maybe that's to be clarified. But, uh, if we would call them links in this protocol. <laughs> That's what we call them in Eiffel. Um, um, yeah, but we can we can use that as a working name. I mean, mm -hmm. at least for now. Uh, I don't so see maybe it could be relevant yeah. Yeah. to add that on the same level. So as a complete thing, what do you think? Does this look like a, a good structure? To me, it actually looks quite, quite good. And now. I think so. 
I, I could actually, uh, when, when looking at like this, I wouldn't mind the meta part. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, or I don't know if you want to call it meta, but just caps lighting. So there's nothing. Uh, because now there's kind of like, I don't know if you if, uh, the right word, but like levels of information. Uh, I guess. One, I guess. Uh, in it's one place it is. Mm. like version directly on it and then their subject which is under and the other ones have also like deeper structures yeah it makes sense if you would do it if you would for example document that we have event.data dot and then we have um, uh, main structure part we could like a document the, the syntax for the, or what should you say, the st structure syntax for the event the payload. Okay. We do the main structure and then would, it would be uh, properties uh, under that main structure, uh, properties or object. And then there would be object properties or something like that. Does that make sense? Then. This would this subject here would be the the uh, yeah sorry the, the main structure and then we have properties for other objects and then we have yeah, content should maybe it's on here then um, something like this you see what I'm yeah. aiming at. Yeah, I guess that's something that we'll specify with the with the schema, anyways. But yeah. So, so with this, we would need such a level on also on, on these parts. We shouldn't put properties directly on this level here in the in the path, so to say, in the JSON path. Yeah. If it's just a cosmetic thing, I mean, we can decide to do it or not to do it. Uh, I don't see any. It's fine for me if we want to have the, the extra meta. I don't see any downside um, apart from maybe making the, the JSON path slightly longer, but I don't think it's, um, I don't think that's, that's a problem. Um, I think that's relevant for like the, uh, it's more relevant maybe for the cloud events type of fields. Um, because they may be used for filter, filter to filter when you have a lot of messages. So mm -hmm. I personally mm -hmm. like meta better than common. I'm used to meta, so that's fine. <laughs> that's what we use in iPhone, so that's perfectly fine with me. I didn't want to force it in here, uh, but we can use it. Then at least people who are aware of Eiffel understands what it is about, <laughs> I think. Um, hmm? So is this something that we would like to propose them, at least for now? I think it's looks good and uh, uh, kind of like nice with that um, definition you had above there also, uh, main structure properties, that type of thing is, uh, for me, it, it, this is more of consistency and that if you have something that is consistent, it's easier to, to parse your program, I guess. So uh, I think it's... Yeah, I guess you could structure your SDK code in a better way if you have an object-oriented program language, for example, where you implement the SDK, you could more easily uh, define these as classes. Uh, it would be probably nicer in the SDK code, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. I guess um, that's, that's part of also the thinking uh, with, uh, with the objects or subjects, like task run with uh, fixed fields so that like group together so that you have some something that returns you in your programming language a task run object or environment object and so forth so that 
um, you can use that in the code. Uh, but this still still applies to this format, I think. Um, I was thinking that the term subject here, if it's good or not, I mean, since subject is also in the in the cloud events and it stands for something else. Uh, could we call it noun properties or something instead? Uh, if I can rem uh, remember correctly, we did check that and it's more it's subject and predicate, I think. It's subject and predicate. Okay. That's because I think we documented that, right? Somewhere. Was it here or where was it? No, it wasn't here. Uh, uh, is it common metadata? Yeah. Yeah, subject and predicates. <clears throat> okay, so then it's we should have subject there. <laughs> uh, that's the correct term then, because uh, this is the subject and this is the predicate. Just so everyone is aware of what it stands for. Uh, and this term here is the reason for calling this the subject then. Mm -hmm. uh, then this predicate here is not reflected in the structure. I was, yeah, maybe that's the second thing. If we should, uh, to me, it's fine to continue discussing this the whole hour. <laughs> uh, yep. I know, Andrea, that you proposed that all these should be part of the, the schema or at least of the documentation that each event with the same subject should have the same list of properties uh, in the content part then, I guess. Uh, and that's one way to do it. And then document which properties are mandatory in what event and which are optional. Another way is, of course, to have different JSON schemas depending on the predicate. Uh, which means that there could be different properties in the content part, depending on which predicate you have. Um, if you follow what I... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, think from a general documentation point of view, I would still like to say, okay, these are the properties that are, you, you may have uh, on, a, on, on this type of subject. Uh, because then in that place we can, you know, go in greater detail, say, okay, what is the ID and put all the examples and maybe say, okay, uh, make some, even some platform specific example, make all the discussion. And then um, in the schema, you could have like uh, separate schemas uh, and only contains the, the, the fields that are relevant. Uh, but yeah. I'm not sure if, if this answers. Yeah, I think it does to some extent at least. Uh, so let's see, well, I want to be here, yeah. Uh, so I think that's what you proposed, right? In the, if I do it like this instead, I think it's seen uh, here, right? These things. Uh, so that you propose where where we should have different uh, pr properties as optional and where they should are mandatory or where they should be not permitted or permitted. Uh, so this would be the documentation stating how for a certain predicate, which properties are then mandatory or not. Um, yeah. That's another way to do it than how we do it in Eiffel, but I wouldn't say it's wrong just because of that. Uh, so for the same uh, subject, but with a different predicate, there would be a different list of mandatory and, and permitted and so on properties. Uh, it's kind of related to the discussion that we need to have soon on the whether we should have links or not in the events. 
but I guess until we are there, I guess this could be the way we document these things. Uh, because if we would have links, uh, it depends on how we would introduce links, of course, as well. But if we would have links and then have some statement saying we shouldn't duplicate any information that has uh, previously been sent uh, by your necess necessary event or something, then we don't need to repeat that information again. So we shouldn't even be permitted in the following events on the same subject. But I think we're not there yet. And we might want to support um, events with full, uh, so to say, subject bodies anyway, um, even if we introduce links. So that it's possible to, to provide all the information in each event instead of needing to have links between them and needing to aggregate multiple events. Yeah. And yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it, it, it makes sense. I mean, uh, it, it seems to me like a uh, very strict requirement to say if, if an information was ever sent, not to send it again. Um, I imagine if I'm starting to listening to events and I miss the first event, then I will never get that information again. Uh, so it. Yeah, unless you're aware of a database where you know that all events are always stored, then you can ask that database for it. Uh, but but that's that's more in the in the links discussion. So maybe we don't need to go into that detail there. But one thing, well, just strikes me in this. I mean, the pipeline run is another uh, subject, which has its own uh, content properties. Um, and we will, of course, never include all the pipeline run properties, I guess, in all subsequent events. And whatever happened before this uh, task run event is not either part of this subject structure. So there will always be information that is not sent in the current event, but you would need to find up some other event to be able to find. Um, I'm not sure where I wanted to go with that. But. <laughs> no, I think yeah, that's another example of information that is only sent once or only sent in other events. Uh, that, mm. that may be where, where you were going. The um, question there is if you want to, uh, you can think of it. I, I had a, with the pipeline run there, I had an, an idea if you want to list it out to a reference uh, section instead. So you, you stated that mm. one, so you saw that it was a reference out uh, to be more explicit, but uh, you can think of it. Um, going back to this with, with the uh, documentation, uh, I had, unfortunately, a, a bit of problem trying to figure out or, or map this, these uh, mandatory permitted, not permitted things. Um, so I would pro basically probably prefer that, okay, if, if we state DevCV pipeline queued, uh, that we actually state these ones are mandatory and these are optional. Uh, and because that's, for me, it would be uh, easier to kind of like map uh, what type of, of uh, uh, properties you can use here. You mean you in this me? part of the documentation instead of a table then or? Yeah. Uh, do you follow what I'm what I'm out after? I think so. So it should instead be in this bullet list instead of having it in a table. Was that the thing you wanted to say? Or yeah, uh, it feels a bit uh, difficult to to um, uh, trying to grasp. Okay, which which was it that I could use and which not? Because you, you basically need to, if we just have a table like this and you want to figure out how does the whole event look like, you need to scroll up and down all the time. Uh, 
you need to go up to the subject, look, okay, what fields was there? And then get down here again. Uh, so you have to scroll a lot in order to get out, okay, which fields are there and not. Yeah, so here we see the, the different, I mean, this is a common one, but then we have source and task name and pipeline and those. So these are the properties for the, this, for the prop, uh, com, sorry, subject properties, right? Subject content properties. <laughs> uh, and then they should be the same as in this table. Um, yeah, so I, I'm wondering if we'd actually need the, the kind of like overview uh, but instead place them in each one. Of course, it will be kind of a repetition, but I think it's going to be easier to read and and map that mentally. So splitting this table into each of the sub uh, events instead, you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to to avoid to repeat all the examples and description and so forth. And but yeah, I mean, oh, this could be made as links to to the original table if that helps, but or we could copy paste. It's just that if you update the description then of the source or task name, then you, you have to go and in all the events to update mm. the description everywhere around. Yeah. It's not a big One alternative, problem. I guess, could be to add columns here for each of the three predicate events. So queued, started, finished as columns here, and then add the, the checkboxes here. Uh, and then just maybe refer there from this documentation instead. Uh, would that make it any easier? Of course, then it will be in one place, but still it won't be under each event type. But since this is not, I mean, if we have the same subject content for each event of the same subject, <laughs> we don't really need to document the complete event content in each predicate section, right? We can instead refer to the event structure, which is in this uh, subject section, if you follow what I say. As long as the reader has at least time. So for example, if I'm interested in the queued event and I want to figure out, okay, which parameters uh, do I need to have here or not, if I can get a grasp of that easily, um then it's it's perfectly fine but uh so it's, it's reader convenience or writer convenience and mm. i would probably uh, I... confirm for a reader convenience but yes yeah. to, to me that's why i put them in a table with instead of having columns i put them in a in a table with all the fields because then if you want to see the queued event then you have the list here you don't have to check or do anything at, at least that that was what i was trying to do but but it yeah like... I, I see but it might not be clear what is what what does it mean with status here what does it really mean then you need to go up here and say okay status yeah that's a status of a finished task run and you can have these values so then you anyway need to go up there but i'm thinking this is maybe documentation technical thing then but I guess we could have used this as like documentation snippets instead mm. so this is one documentation snippet stored in a separate file or somehow and then it could be shown both here and here if we want to so then it's only one okay. place to change in the actual source documentation file mm -hmm. that could be one thing um, okay but it, it seems that it's mostly, uh, yeah, as you say, you know, like a documentation technical challenge more than mm. in, the, in the actual content. I'm not sure if Markdown supports that in a good way. Yeah, I've actually seen it in internal documentation that we have such snippets. Uh, so it should be possible to use it in Markdown. Have they some kind of, is it called include or what is it called? I don't remember now. Uh, it's basically a pre-parsing that you, uh, fragments they call it. Ah, uh, fragments, you... but maybe that's uh, in, in our internal framework, not yet, but we use that. That's not part of Markdown, is it? Uh, not in, in not in itself, it's a pre-processing step. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And that might not be supported in GitHub, of course. Mm, unfortunately not. And not no. either here. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, we, we, we could have some template with metadata that is merged in Markdown then for visualization and get, um, I think that, um, mm. yeah. <clears throat> so we only have a few minutes left. Should we do some uh, updates to the actual <clears throat> uh, PR here from our discussions? I can just add uh, this more or less to, as a comment in the whole on the pull request itself. I clean it up a bit just. So this is not what we want. If I remember now, and not the later part either. Um, but this is something that we would like to see. And this structure here. This is, of course, a, a later addition if we want to, but we can have it for reference. Yes. Should I include this part up here as well? Or I need to restructure it, of course. Um, yeah, I think so. Be nice. Um, I could do that offline. You don't need to spend your time on it. I, I added myself to... afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I'll update yeah. The, the PR then before the next meeting, so we hmm? we can do another round of review and yep. hopefully. Good. So, okay. any other business then? We we didn't get to the to Mauricio's uh, issue there, but we take that in another meeting, I think. Or we can take it maybe if I don't know. Will he come to KubeCon? Andrea, do you know to see the events con? Um, yeah, yeah, yes. He will, yeah. So we might be able to talk to him there about those things. Um, anything burning, Andrea, regarding CD events con or something like that that we should say something about? Um, the, the, the only thing, I mean, the uh, the virtual part of the conference, um, so we have someone from CNCF that is working on setting up the um, RSVP link. So that soon, um, hopefully, we, we will distribute a link so that if you're attending remotely, you can just RSVP there and attend the conference. And, and for the in-person, um, so in the room, we will need to have a few folks, one or more, um, that are helping out with kind of syncing the in-person event with the virtual one in terms of questions from the in-person audience going to a virtual event or question from virtual attendees going to in-person speaker in this kind of situation. Um, so I already have one. Um, a person uh, who volunteered to help, uh, Stefan Montre from uh, Mirantis, is help. Happy, to, he's going to be in Valencia, and he's happy to help with this. Uh, but I think if we can have maybe two or three, so it doesn't have to be one person doing this throughout the day. Uh, that's that's better. Is it stuff like? Uh someone in the audience asked the question and then you repeat it into a microphone so the virtual audience can hear it as well and those kind of things are uh yes or you type it in the uh, chat for yeah. the zoom uh or yeah this this kind of uh, someone watches the zoom chat also if someone asks a question then you can yeah. repeat it yeah so that's i think Eamon, yeah. you mentioned i'm not it doesn't seem like that is the current state but that we may that maybe we were required to bring our own gear for making it virtual, but I guess that's not the case now. We, they will have yeah, like... I think that was a rumor about that, but now it, when we talked, Andrea, to Emily the other day, I think uh, we heard yeah. that they will actually have gear for us, so we don't need to bring, bring it ourselves. Nice. Fortunately. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um... I got to jump to the next meeting. Oh, yeah. yeah. If we have a Good. vocabulary meeting in two weeks, mm. it will be live in Valencia. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we will have a single oh, yeah. meeting uh, next Monday, right? So I hope to see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thanks for today. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.